Hello YouTube, I am going to give you the official farmhand mic crop report. Today is Sunday, June 13th, 2021. I just returned home from a trip to Texas and we're just out here looking at some of the crops. This was one of the first fields we planted here and uh, it's looking pretty good. The corn's up there and that uh, I'd say two and a half to three foot high in some places and we had uh, three and a half inches of rain while I was gone and last night we had a surprise storm that popped up. We got 1.2 inches of rain last night. You go just a little bit farther north and they got more and I'm going to show you. I mean as you can see the corn is about up to my waist. So the old row of thumb knee high by the 4th of July, we're already there. Overall, things are looking pretty good here in southern Dark County, Ohio. We started planting corn on April 6th. Well, I say we. I wasn't actually there. I was working in Texas at that time too. But this field here I did plant. This was planted, I think, around April 18th. And we side dressed this a couple weeks ago. So this is looking pretty good. Of course, had good rain, uh, good temperatures. This crop's been through a lot. I mean, this stuff's been snowed on frosted uh, quite a few nights but coming along and let's look at some of the winter wheat so this is going to be ready here to combine in a couple weeks so of course they were cutting where i was at down in uh, texas in southern oklahoma and like i said uh, probably just a couple weeks away here by the fourth of july this wheat should be ready to go this field here is between greenville and union city ohio Last night when I went to bed, or Saturday night when I went to bed, I'm doing this video a couple days late, but anyhow, I got a warning on my phone that this severe thunderstorm was coming through, and they weren't even calling for it. This was just like a pop-up surprise. And I got 1.2 inches at my house. I talked to a friend of mine that lives just a mile and a half from me. He got 2.2 inches, and I heard that they got over 3 inches up here. In that area. Now I'm back down in the Arcanum area looking at this field of soybeans here. And we left that wide row there just for the comment section. Did that on purpose because we totally knew I was going to drone this field. And you can kind of see right there there's no corn stalk standing. And in the distance you can see some. This is a field where I started running the Versatile Fury last fall and never got it finished. So it just got planted as is. These soybeans are looking pretty good overall. This field here is just outside of Savona, Ohio. And let's watch this guy here with his drone skills, see if he's any good. And that's one thing, you can drive by a field or walk by a field on the ground and everything looks the same, but boy, you pop a drone up or you're flying on an airplane and you can sure see the variances in the crop in the field. Now this field here, this just looks phenomenal all the way across. That is a decent looking field of corn is all I got to say. And as I've said in other videos, the crop rotation around here is pretty much corn and soybeans. So this field was soybeans last year, corn this year. We did run the Versatile Fury over this field. I just want to show the end rows here because a lot of people ask me when I was side dressing corn, you're running corn over on the end rows. But if you do it when the corn's young enough, the corn will bounce out of it. Of course, the end rows don't yield near as good, but... Uh, Anyways, I just want to show you here, it does come back uh, if you run it over when it's young enough. Now, right that area right there, we had to make several trips back and forth to fill up the applicator. Now we're back over in some soybeans. I showed this field in my last crop report video. This field was corn last year. We ran the Versatile Fury High Speed Disc over that. This field had a cover crop of cereal rye planted on it, and I planted this field, I think that was uh, April 15th. So overall, these are looking pretty good. Of course, these soybeans here have been snowed on and frosted many times but hopefully we're past all that all right now let's see if this guy can land his drone again people ask me a lot of times what drone I fly right here I am using my DJI Mavic Air it's a nice lightweight drone very easy to fly of course all DJI that's all I have is DJI drones but they've all been really good the other thing I need to talk about, I don't know if you can hear the cicadas in the background. We've had them pretty heavy here, so uh, they've been in my yard uh, and so forth. They, they're not bothering the crops by any means, but I see some of the treetops uh, where they're eating them. But let's go in the woods and have a look at these things, and you can hear them.
The cicadas here are considered brood X. They come out of the ground once the soil temperature reaches 65 degrees. They crawl up the trees here and then they crawl out of their shell and they're making quite a mess. I mean, look at all these things. We see a little bit of these every year. We had them, I guess, 17 years ago, but nothing like this. And uh, it just kind of made you sick when I was weed eating and mowing around these trees. They were all over the leaves and so forth. So this lasted a couple weeks. I mean, one night they was really bad. But they come out of their shell. They're white in color. They'll grow some wings. And, yeah, look at that. And then they will fly off. So as creepy as they are, I've kind of taken an interest in it just because it's something you don't see every day. And just showing you a few pictures here. And... Just this past uh, week since I've been home, my wife said they've been real bad last week and I wasn't here, but you can just hear them like you heard in some of the previous videos. And it's my understanding they they come out, they live for four to six weeks, they mate, what not, and uh, they're going to start to die off towards the end of June into mid-July. Again, they call this Brood X, and these are supposed to be every 17 years. So I don't know if they're going to vary in 17 more years, if they'll have a different range or whatnot. But looking at the maps, looks like they're real bad Indiana uh, from our place in West Central Ohio down to Cincinnati. And then they kind of skip over, and it's my understanding over by New Jersey and so forth, they pick up again. And I never thought about it until now, but seeing these white ones come out of the shell... It kind of reminds me of shrimp, and I like grilled shrimp, uh, raw shrimp, whatever, but uh, supposedly people are eating these things, and I don't think I could bring myself to do it. I'm not that hungry, but I know the birds are sure liking them. Their birds in the yard are just going crazy over these things. And this tree uh, that I was showing you where the cicadas were, that's in my front yard. These here are on the property line, but they are everywhere. Right now, they're swarming the yard like crazy. And if you're out mowing the yard or just walking around the yard, I mean, they're just going to land on you. They are pretty thick and loud. <laughs> That's the official crop and cicada report from Farmhand Mike from Southern Dark County, Ohio for Sunday, June 13th, 2021. Feel free to comment below, hit that like button if you're new to the channel. Please consider hitting that subscribe button and still a lot of good content coming to my channel. Posted several good wheat harvest videos from my recent Texas and Oklahoma trip, so if you've not seen them, check those out. Remember, you can also find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at Farmhand Mike. And as always, thanks for watching and supporting my social media.